Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 186 in the series of basic math, and today we will have our sixth lesson in the series of 10 videos on the topic of probability. Our Sixth video. As you can see, the problem for today is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We'll have three actors, actors A, B, and C. We are told that persons A, B, and C, they're going to work independently. That's a very important word. We talked about it in detail on day number 181, the very first video in the series of 10. We talked about what it means for events to be independent. And hence, they work independently. In other words, the odds of one person being successful or not successful has absolutely nothing to do with how the other two are going to perform. They all work independently to solve a given problem. We are told that the likelihood of success, we are told that the likelihood of success for each of these people, A, B, and C, is one quarter for A, one third for B, three fifths for C. One, one quarter, one third, three fifths, respectively. Questions are as follows. The very first question, we're going, to, we're going to look at several different scenarios. We're going to look at multiple scenarios. The very first question is, part A, very first question is, what are the odds that they will all fail? What are the odds they will all fail? Well, let's find out, shall we? The probability that they will all fail, how do we present that? Would simply be the odds that A fails, which we represent as with the bar on the top, times the odds that B will fail, and times the odds that C will fail. And the reason why this probability has to be equal to happens to be equal to the product of these three probability has to do with the fact that they are independent events. If prob if event A and B are independent, then the odds that A and B will happen is simply the product of the two. Product of the product of the uh, likelihood of event A times the product of the likelihood of event B. As I said already, we learned that on day number Day number 181, the very first video in, in the series of 10. If I, if I flip a coin, what are the odds that I will get head? 50%. What are the odds that I will get tail in the second try? The odds of getting a head in the first try and odds of, odd of getting a tail on the second try is simply half times half. In other words, there's a quarter percent chance, not quarter percent rather, there's a quarter chance or 25% chance that I will get a head in the first try, tail in the second try, or vice versa, or two tails or two heads. We talked all, of, all about that on day number 181. So there it is. The odds that they will all fail is simply the product of the odds that A will fail, times the odds that B will fail, and times the odds that C will fail. And that is simply right here. One fourth chance that A will succeed, therefore A has a three quarter chance that he will fail. There is a one third chance that B will succeed, therefore B has two-third chance that he will fail. There is a three-fifths chance that C will succeed, and therefore C has a two-fifths chance that he will fail. That's it, that's how simple it is. All we have to do is simplify. I, we see a four here and a two times two, that's four, that's gone. We see a three here and we see a three here, that's gone. That's it, we're done. It's simply one, one over five, it's simply one over five, or 20%. There is a 20% chance given the fact that one person has a 25% chance of being successful at solving this problem, another person has about 33% chance, and the third person has as high as 60% chance. But if you ask somebody, what are the odds that they will all fail, given the first scenario that even the lowest person has a chance of 25% being, of being successful, the odds that they will all fail is not very likely. It's only 20% 20, 20 chance. In other words, there's an 80% chance, there's an 80% chance that at least one of them will succeed because the odds of their all failing is 20%. Let's look at part B. Let's look at part B. I'm going to erase this part. We're going to move on then. What are the odds now? We're going to move on to the next one. What are the odds that, this is part B, what are the odds that, that A will succeed? But not B or C. So in the exam, of course, they can ask you this question in several different ways. We're going to look at several different possible scenarios. So we're done with this one. Odds of all of them failing, we're done now. I'm going to pick up speed. The odds that A will succeed 
is simply the probability of R A being successful, but not B or C. So the R that B will fail is simply B with the power on the top, and the R that C will fail is also C on the top. That's it, we're done. The odds that A will succeed is one quarter. The odds that B will succeed is one third. Therefore, the odds that B will fail is two third. The odds that C will succeed is three fifth. Therefore, the odds that C will fail is two fifth. Again, we simplify. Oh, there we go again. We have four here. We have a two and a two. That's gone. So it's three times five. There is a one out of fifteen chance. There is one out of fifteen chance that the person is not very likely. One out of fifteen. One out of fifteen is only about seven percent. One out of fifteen is only about seven percent. That's not very likely. It's highly unlikely. In other words, it's highly unlikely the person that the person that the person with the lowest probability of being successful. You have three people. You have a sign. There is a problem that needs to be solved, and you, as the manager, have assigned these three people to work on this problem independently. They're not working together, they're sitting in a three different room, working on the problem, trying to find a solution to it. And based on your experience, based on your judgment call, based on what you know about these people, you have assigned some probability. And your gut feeling tells you that there is a 25% chance that A will succeed, there is a 33% chance that B will succeed, and there is as high as 60% chance that C will succeed. Given these facts, it's only 7% chance, there is only 7% chance, highly unlikely, only 7% chance that the person that you assign the lowest probability will in fact succeed. But the other two people that you feel have more experience and more knowledge will actually will end up failing. Not very likely. Not bloody likely. How do we know one, of, well, one over fifteen is about seven seven percent chance? In case you're wondering, it's very simple. Look, it's very simple. One over fifteen. If you want to multiply top and bottom by seven, if you want to multiply top and bottom by seven, you will end up with seven over fifteen times seven is one hundred and five. 15 times 7 is 105. How do I know 15 times 7 is 105? Because 15 times 10 is 150. Listen carefully. 15 times 10 is 115. 10. 10 15s are 150. 5 15s are 75. 5 15s are 75. And if you were to add two more 15s to it, if you were to add two more 15s to it, you get 105. This is 5 15s and this is 2 15s. 2 15s and the 5 15 will make 7 15s. That's 105. So 7 over 105, had it been 7 over 100, had it been 7 over 100, that would have been exactly 7%. Hence the approximate sign. 7 over 105 is approximately 7%. Let's go on. Part number C. Just give me a quick break here. This is only, this is only in the event, this is only in the event that the problem asks you what is the approximate chance that A will succeed and not B or C and the answer choices are presented to you in the form of percentages. In that case you have to be quick enough to realize that after you have done all the work and you arrive at 1 out of 15, you have, you have to be able to see that somehow we have to convert this bottom into a 100 or something as close to 100 as possible as quickly as possible. The quickest way, the simplest way, the most efficient way to convert the bottom into 100 or something close to 100 is to simply take your fraction 1 over 15 and multiply it by top 7 over 7 you end up with 7 over 105 which is approximately 7% and that's the answer you will pick as I said in the event that the answer choices are presented to you presented to you not in the in the form of fractions but in the form of percentages and the question simply asks you what is the approximate chance that A will succeed but not B or C and the answer choices is 7% so that's, you, that's what you pick because they're looking for approximate there you go let's look at C answer choice problem number C I'm going to pick up speed I'm taking too long I, would, I always have a tendency to go at a leisurely pace what are the odds that A and B will succeed? A, A and A and B will succeed, but not C. That's part C. What are the odds that A and B will succeed and not C? You should be able to see immediately, you should be able to see immediately that that's even more unlikely. A and B, those are the two people with the lower probability. If if I, it's one thing that one person may get lucky if you if you put three people in the room or or for example, let's make it very simple. Let's say you have ten people working in the room, uh, in separate room working on the problem, and it turns out that the person with the lowest probability of being successful actually finds a solution. Maybe it's a fluke, but it's highly unlikely. Listen very carefully. It's highly unlikely 
that nine people with the lower probability of being successful actually be become successful, find a solution, and the person that you thought was the most experienced has the highest probability of getting a solution fails. Very, very unlikely. Same thing is going on here. The chances that A and B will succeed, they have a lower probability, 25% and 33%. Chances that A and B both they will both succeed, but the guy with a 60% chance of being successful will in fact fail, is not very likely. It's going to be even lower than this. It's going to be even lower than 7%. These are the sort of intuition you should you should have even before you begin your work. Do you understand? Don't just do it mechanically. Just do it out. Enough of the talk. So the chances that A will succeed and the chances that B will succeed. There you go. Chances that A will succeed and B will succeed, but C will not succeed is right here. A and B will succeed, but not C, not C, right here. Chances that A will succeed is one quarter. Chances that, A, that B will succeed is one out of three. And the chances that C will succeed is three-fifth. Therefore, the chances that the odds that C will not succeed is two-fifth. Let's see what we get. That's it. That's all we can do here. We have a two here. We can get rid of it with the four here. It becomes two. And two times five is ten. Two times five is ten. Ten times three is 10 times 3 is 30. It is 1 out of 30 chance. It is 1 out of 30 chance. 1 out of 30, 1 out of 30, if you want a quick approximation, if you want a quick approximation, it's about 3% chance. 3% because if you were to multiply 3 over 3, you'll end up with 3 over 90. And this is not a very good approximation, but you get the idea. You get, it gives it the, I'm just trying to show you that it's actually lower than 7% much lower than 7% that we just found a little while ago, which was a scenario where A succeeds, but B and C fail. The chance is that two people with a lower probability fail, and the one with the highest probability, highest odds of getting, getting the solution, actually fails, is even lower. It's only 3% chance. About 3%, not exactly. Let's do one more. Part number D. What are the chances, what are the odds that, that, at least one will succeed. It may not be a bad idea actually to pause the video pause the video and do it yourself as soon as I set up the thing. It's a bit too late for in the story for me to tell you that but still it's not it's not altogether late. What are the uh, what are the odds that at least one will succeed? At least one. We're not specifying who at least one will succeed. The odd that at least one will succeed we already talked about it as a matter of fact when we did the first problem, I think it was part A. I think I, I did I think I touched upon it. The odds that one at least one will succeed is equal to has to equal to this this has to equal to one minus the odds that no one succeeds. That no one succeeds. And we already saw that from the first problem. Uh, I believe it was one out of five. Let's do it out. Let's do it out again, if you like. The odds that no one succeeds is simply so. It's one minus the odds that A does not succeed times the odds that B does not succeed times the odds that C does not succeed. And odds that A does not succeed is four out four fifth. The odds that B does not succeed is two third. The odds that C does not succeed is two fifth. Something has gone wrong here. I got two fifth here. This should have the this. This is one quarter. I don't know where the hell this four fifth came from. The A has one quarter chance of being successful. But the odds that he will not succeed is three quarter. I don't know where it came from. Three quarter. Three quarter. What the hell is the matter with me? Three quarter. So we have a four here that goes four with that one, and this three drops out, and it's one out of five. So it's one minus one out of one minus one over five. It is eighty percent chance. There is there is a very likely, uh, very high likelihood, very likely that at least one person will find a solution to the problem if you put three people, three brain to work, given the fact that. One person has a 25% chance of being successful. The second one has about 33% chance of being successful. And one of them actually has higher 60% chance of being successful. In that scenario, if you put three of them together to work on, a, on the given problem independently, at least one of them will find a solution. There is an 80% chance that that will happen. 
Why? Because we found out in part A there was there was 20% chance that no one would succeed. Let's carry on. Let's do one more, one last one. One last one. Part E. What are the odds that that they will all succeed? What are the odds that they will all succeed? Let's find out. Let's see. We're done with this part. Just give me one brief second before I erase it. What are the odds that they will all succeed? It's right there. It's very simple. It's very simple, very straightforward. It's simply the product of these three fractions. Odds that A will succeed times the odds that B will succeed times the odds that C will succeed. And that's simply one quarter times one third times three-fifths. Three is going to cancel out and that's it. Four times five is twenty is one out of twenty. There is a one out of twenty per one out of twenty chance that they will all succeed which amounts to five percent chance. You must also be able to figure out these uh, these percentages, these probability in percentages, as I said just in the event that the answer choices are presented to you either in percentages or decimals. Not every time they give you the answer choices in fractions. It could be in fractions, it could be in percentages, it could be in decimal. You have to be ready for it. So that's it. There's only 5% chance. Very, 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 very unlikely that they will all succeed. I mean, it could happen. There are chances, but chances are very remote. Only one out of five, only one out of five chance. Only about 20% chance. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.